Hello everyone, welcome back to ESA Summer Online. I'm Shadow Frost, I'll be your donation reader for the next few runs. Uh, we are, I would like to remind everyone that we're raising money for the Alzheimer Fund and uh, links to donate can be found below the stream. Um, I, I would also like to thank Kaspersky, Twitch and Fusonic for sponsoring uh, this event. Uh, real quick before we start run, uh, we got a $50 donation from Eminem uh, saying great run, great event, great cause. Thank you to everyone involved. And with that, I'm going to throw it over to Focus we're running Mega Man X7. Good luck. Well, actually, wait, I just remember that's actually, uh, what, that was Star Fox. Why did I think about Mega Man when it was Star Fox? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, hi, my name is Focus, uh, Focus Sight, or just Focus. Some of you may have seen me already with Mega Man Extreme 2 or Sonic 06. Quick note about that Sonic 06 run. Uh, a finding, actually, that we found at this ESA run is now saving about two to three minutes in Silver's story in general, and is the biggest find in terms of tech for Silver since 2012. So I really want to thank again ESA for having me now three times on this marathon. It's led to some huge discoveries. And it's going to lead to, well, this this run, Mega Man X7, any percent new game. Um, so English won the bid war, which unfortunately means we're going to lose about a minute, in, about, a, about a minute, a minute, two minutes uh, due to text yeah. alone. It's not great, but we get to hear the English voices, which is what everyone donated <laughs> for, including you, Papat, who is my commentator. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I am Papat.1, and... Uh... Yeah, I'm I'm really excited uh, to have this game in the marathon. Uh, I really like this game, uh, and I'm really excited for the English voices. Uh, we'll get to hear Tunyon and Borski and everyone else's favorite uh, Heinard coming up. I, so I love Warfly personally. We always love Warfly, yeah. but. <laughs> Yeah, so um, a few things we should start, say, before the run begins. Uh, so yeah, the English version, we're using specifically the UK release. Uh, we'll mention why in a little bit while we get through the intro stage. Um, this is also the X Legacy Collection release, the uh, recent port, which is actually the best version to run this on. Um, it improves the load times, it runs natively at 1080p and 4x3, and it just... It's the best version. You can swap between the versions as you wish, as in terms of, like, the different languages and different versions that incur. And it's really nice to get like that, because it, it's just so compact, it's so easy, it looks nice, it runs well. It's honestly the, the best version of the game. Um, also, just to let you know, we have the game settings. We have Auto Charge and Auto Repeat on, which is going to be useful for charging and shooting as Axel. Um, control settings, this is my control settings, essentially. And we also get to see the lovely UK, you know, UK EU logo for Mega Man X7. We're whipped up in Microsoft Word in, you know, a few few minutes, maybe. Maybe a maybe a half hour if we're lucky. Um that drop shadow does look very difficult. But um yeah, if uh Papa, you ready? If I'm if you're ready, I'm ready, really. Yeah, I'm good to go. Uh are you ready for a countdown? Absolutely. Alright. Uh let's get going in five, four, three, two, one, go. Alright, so um uh, would you like to explain the story a little bit of X7, Papa? As we get uh, yeah. started. So, uh, so we're gonna spawn in or teleport in here as Axel. Uh, Axel is part or was part of an organization uh, named uh, Red Alert. Uh, kind of a semi shady organization. They did some kind of weird dealings on. Uh, uh, they uh, weren't exactly the most savory of groups, but uh, they weren't like super evil. Uh, but then they started getting involved in some uh, some more heinous acts, and Axel decided, no, I'm, this isn't for me. Uh, so he ends up going rogue, and so like as we're going uh, starting the game uh, is Axel uh, departing from Red Alert and trying to get away, and the Red Alert organization like sending their army after him to try to get him back because he's a special type of robot uh, with a unique ability, and they want to uh, utilize him for the future. And yeah, that's essentially where this uh, game starts, with a new protagonist, they were trying to inject life into the series, but to be completely honest, I actually quite like Axel uh, as a character. Yes. I think Axel actually is a good addition to X7, and also X8, which is my personal favorite X game. Um, fortunately, much like Silver and Sonic 06, kind of played with a really bad voice at the beginning in the first entry. Uh... <laughs> Although I don't, it's not the worst, it's definitely not the best. X8 voice actor uh, for, for Axel is much, much better. And we get Zero here. Um, 
who is, this is back in the same highway as an X1. And so he's, can't believe I'm back here again. Very deep voice. Um, you, you'd love to know that same voice actor who does Tanyan in the English version. They're the same voice actor. Yep. Tanyan is... and Zero have the same voice actor. I love it. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're uh, coming in and the second half of the intro here, we got uh, playing as Zero now. Uh, Zero is very similar to uh, some of his previous and future incarnations where he's got his saber, he's got the double jump, uh, the saber is very strong. Uh, it deals uh, like four around, damage. Like it does four damage. It deals like twice as much uh, at, per hit as Axel shot. Uh, so we get to kill enemies very quickly. Uh, noted here with the bees. Uh, there's a technique that we're using uh, called uh, sword duck canceling. Uh, you can do sword duck and sword dash canceling in this game. Uh, in two D segments, uh, it's a lot easier to do duck canceling than dash canceling. Um, to kind of quickly get your first slash off uh, repeatedly. Um, Zero's first slash deals more damage than his subsequent slashes in his combo, uh, which is a little unusual, but uh, it, it just makes it so that the, the sword dash, sword duck canceling uh, is the most convenient way to get these enemies defeated. Did you say defeated? I swear I heard a pun where there probably wasn't one, and I was going to... I didn't intend to say defeated, uh, but you could take it that way if you'd... Like. Sure, I will. I I definitely won't then. <laughs> yeah, we get another instance of the dash canceling here because we're against a wall. Although honestly, it's kind of weird, and so sometimes I don't really rely on it. Although that was strange. Uh, why didn't he do his knockback animation? Yeah, weird. Uh... That was kind of faster though. <laughs> yeah, that was that was definitely faster, but I don't know why he didn't go backwards. It's a little weird. Probably because I failed to uh... hit him several times. <laughs> Anyways, another right. small thing that I want to mention quick is that there's also um, a few points where you actually want to abuse uh, or speed up the automated sections. If you start to walk there instead of dash jumping, you'll, you'll be slower. So there are some points where you want to make sure we jump at the right time or dash at the right time to speed up a little bit. Yeah, just the the game would normally lock you into a walking speed for like part of a scripted uh, section, and so if you're able to uh, abuse uh, the fact that you can still move slightly before that, uh, you get to um, utilize that extra dash speed that you would get not normally get to speed it up a little bit. All right, we have our mini auto scroller here with this uh, mega scorpion chasing after us, and then we drop down, and Axel teaches us that. His name is Axel, and uh, that we actually are now able to swap between two characters, uh, him and Zero. Uh, this is the first game in the mainline X series that you are able to swap freely between two characters. Uh, they had uh, dabbled in some of that in previous entries. Uh, uh, X3 uh, has uh, limited usage of that, and then uh, some of the handheld Extreme 2, I believe, yep. has that as well. Uh, his weak point here is his head, by the way. Uh, we want to make sure we're slashing at the right time and then getting invincibility frames to then hit the head immediately. I just hit the arm. Oh, Whoa. the claw! Yeah. That's not great. Yeah. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're hitting the head specifically. If you hit the claws or the tail, then those don't actually deal damage, but they still take their own health bar. And uh, take time. And Yeah, and when they break, uh, he gets into his invulnerable animation again, gets knocked down, has to... Wait, you have to wait until he's vulnerable to get the hit. Yeah, that's a revenge for not getting the knockback. <laughs> All right, so now uh, because uh, Zero and uh, X, who uh, X is technically in the game, but we won't see him for very often, uh, they they sort of found uh, Axel uh, in, and was like. Uh, where, when he's trying to escape, they brought him back to the Maverick Hunter base, uh, and then uh, Red and his uh, followers threw down this challenge and was like, hey, we challenge you to a duel for uh, the freedom of Axel, I guess, uh, whether or not they uh, Axel gets to live on his own or has to go back to, uh, to Red Alert. Uh, so now this is the aftermath where... Uh, these are the eight locations for the duel where you have to go and fight Red's army. And it's kind of, it is kind of a weird 
plot because that doesn't really make sense for the robot mafia, <laughs> but I guess? Because that's basically what they are characterized as, Red Alert. Yeah. And they have a suspiciously similar logo to things you may have seen before, as I noticed, as you'll see here. <laughs> Suspiciously similar. I can't. I can't put yeah. my. T I can't put my finger on. You know what? I, what this looks like. Yeah, I don't know. It's some uh, some professor character. I think it's. Uh, yeah. We, I don't. I don't know if they're important. We'll find a out. A purple professor. I think. I don't really know yeah. what the what the use of the color has, but you know. <laughs> All right. So we're coming into Gungaroo's stage. Uh, we get to select two of our two characters. That's what Elia was telling us. Yeah. Just select prior two to of your two characters. Stage. Yep, uh, but we're we're gonna start off uh, with Zero as the lead character and Axel as the secondary. Uh, it's just more convenient to start off this way uh, due to the nature of the very beginning of the stage. There's this wall here where if you get a precise, nice, precise double jump with a slash, uh, you get a, just a little bit extra height out of the the jump when you slash it right about the same time, which lets you get over that wall without having to break all the pieces of it and wait for the uh, the animation for it. So very nice first try jump over the wall there. It's also easier if the if you're doing it as the wall comes up because there tends to be you know the the height you have to capture is a little bit lower but yeah. Uh, and then we're coming into the second screen here uh, where we're gonna get into the red mech. Uh, the red mech is uh, very fast, uh, deals a lot of damage very quickly, but it's also extremely important that we take this red punch mech from this screen to the last screen of the stage uh, in order to get a much faster, much more consistent Gungaroo fight. Nice, nice dash attack there. Yeah, the dash can't, you can also dash cancel very slightly if you da if you air dash on the same plane as the ground. That basically means it, it does, it cancels that little fall animation that takes a little bit of time, yeah. Saw you the try there. Yep, we're going oh, wow. through. Uh, Okay, second try. Breaking yeah. Breaking some of the walls here. Uh, this section, we do have to destroy some of these uh, mechanoloids uh, in order to get the uh, last wall here to open. Uh, and then we get through, and the important part of the stage is done. We got the red mech into the last screen. Very nice. Um, yeah, this is actually so quite you recent might have as well. Yeah. Very, very recent developments. I think it was you and Suki that kind of developed this uh, yeah, strat. Yeah, it's kind of weird that we figured this out because it's it has some big results, honestly. Yeah. So you may have noticed that we're uh, collecting some of the uh, the Reploid rescues uh, in the stage. Uh, we're going to be uh, utilizing Whoa. some of those for their uh, upgrades that they give you. Uh, some of them give you uh, health upgrades, some of them give you weapon upgrades, and then others give you uh, like upgrade chips, upgrade uh, CDs that you can uh, use to increase certain abilities of each character. Uh, so we'll see some of that here in a little bit. Get out, okay. I want to get this blue mech now, the blue ride armor. Yeah, the blue ride armor, it moves a lot slower and is a lot more difficult to kill the uh, mechanoloids here in this section for, uh, but it just tears through Gungaroo uh, extremely quickly. It, it's it's honestly laughable how fast the Gungaroo dies with the blue mech. Also, how laughably safe it is. Yes. I haven't heard the English voices in some time. So no. I like the kid right now. <laughs> Don't call me a kid. I ain't that no more. Oh my god, I the English love voices. The English voice acting. It's so good. Alright, so we get back into the blue mech. Uh, whatever mech that you finish uh, the last uh, mechanoloid section in uh, is the mech that you take into the fight, which is why it's important that we get the blue mech to spawn by taking the red mech into the last screen. Ah. So I'm using a special attack move, which has to be done with a dash in order to be effective the way I'm doing it. So if I accidentally don't dash, I get the stop in place and shoot a missile for no reason. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, but you can see that this is super safe because now before we would actually just use Axel on his own, which has a pretty limited power. Uh, rolling while dashing. Uh, 
Wait, rolling is double tapping the dash button, but if you shoot while rolling, it automatically homes in on the enemy that it's locked onto and keeps you invincible. So it's actually yeah. really useful to use. Yeah, not yeah, bad. A little bit, a little bit unfortunate uh, with the accidental missiles there, but uh, yeah. still a pretty good boss fight overall. All right, uh, and from Gungaroo, uh, one reason we come here first is the uh, grenade launcher that he gives us. Uh, Axel is a little bit unique in terms of uh, like weapon collection from bosses. Uh, from several of the bosses, instead of getting a like a special attack, he gets a gun. Uh, that lets him use a special attack. Uh, so the, the grenade launcher is the gun that you get from Gungaroo, uh, which has really high damage output. Um, it doesn't have as high as uh, like rapid fire and you're locked in place on the ground when you shoot it, uh, but it, the damage that it deals is very high. Uh, and then the special attack that you get from it, Explosion, uh, deals a very large amount of damage very quickly. Uh, it's one of the strong, like one of the fastest DPS attacks in the game. Uh, so we'll be us using that a lot in uh, some of the later boss fights. And now we got chips, which are what we get some certain specific um, reploids. Uh, these are akin sort of like the parts that we'd have in X5, 6, uh, except they're only really accessible through reploids. Fun fact, in order to beat this game 100%, in order to get all the chips, you actually need to play it on three playthroughs, at least. So because of yeah. that, the way we route for certain chips here is very specific to a new game. Uh, would you like to explain a little bit of that, Papa? Uh, yeah, so we're going to be getting uh, seven chip upgrades overall. Uh, we're going to be putting three into Axel. Uh, the first two we just put in there uh, give Axel increased rapid fire. Uh, make his, uh, sh his shots come out a little bit faster. Not super important. It's really the third upgrade in each tree that's the really powerful one that we want to get. Uh, in speed, the uh, the third upgrade is Hyper Dash, uh, increased dash speed, and that'll dra uh, very drastically increase uh, how fast we're able to get through stages. Uh, really notable in Tunyon and uh, uh, Warflot or Crow Rank. Uh, where you can kind of skip certain cycles of certain sections uh, with the right dash speed there. Uh, so we come here to Borski next. Uh, Borski uh, is very convenient to do second uh, because he has a weakness to uh, explosion. Uh, and because it's a right chaser stage we and we don't have hyper dash yet, we are free to collect uh, a couple of the, uh, the Reploid rescues to get ourselves hyper dash for the next speed without having to slow down for this speed, for, for this stage. Yeah, this stage is, is, is uh, we actually also go around in a two-path two, two path route. You could do this all in one go, but it's generally easier to do it uh, within two. Um, making sure I get all the bombs, making sure I slow down for Tanaka here, who has one of the CDs. Thank you. Um, yep. It's a bit finicky. This definitely feels like you're on ice at some points with the way how slippery it can be. So I'm using the D-pad to control this to be a little bit yeah, more precise. As you're turning around the corners, it's uh, it's a little bit weird. Like you you want to like tap uh, to get your turns in on the corners, as opposed to like holding the the direction the whole time. Otherwise, like the whole ride chaser like turns to the side and then goes in the direction you want to go. It's uh, it's a little bit awkward, like ice physics -y. But uh, we're here at Borski. Sorry for the internet issues. This my internet's being a bit finicky, but should be hopefully all right overall. Sorry guys. Uh, I don't. That's not how. It, that's not what he says. That's not. A, that's not a statement. Oinkwa. <laughs> Oinkwa. All right. Anyways, explosion. Oh, bad cycle. Oof. Yeah, a little bit bad luck there, where you got the charge attack into you, but. Uh, explosion deals just huge damage. Uh, careful. Oh, here punk, we go! You punk! You, you punk, punk! You punk! <laughs> okay, <All> decent. Right. <laughs> I love Borski. Yeah, so Borski can be an early, I think an early, pretty, early, pretty difficult stage because, um, I mean, the stage itself is just get right used to the moon. That was actually a pretty good uh, Borski main stage. Uh, boss is yeah. kind of random. 
I don't think there's a way to exploit that at all, is there? Uh, not really. They're, you're kind of at the mercy of his uh, his specific patterns in a couple of ways. Um, like, you can always get the first explosion shot off right at the start of the fight. Uh, but after that, uh, you do have to hit him a couple of times in order to get him into phase two. And he can do a couple of different attacks that make him more, uh, give him invulnerability during that time period. Uh, so you have to hope that he gives you the right uh, RNG there or just deal with what he does. Um, and then the second part of his pattern, he goes to a specific spot and then chooses his pattern uh, from there. Um, so you're kind of hoping that he stays in one spot as much as possible. Or if you're on English, you hope that he gives you the U-Punk pattern so that you can hear him. Say yeah, that's obviously the best. That's obviously the best pattern. Not not for the actual speed, just because it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Could I come in here for a few donations? Go right ahead. All right, thank you. We got a thirty dollars donation from Erador saying good luck on the run, focus. And we also have a five dollars donation from Tempest Mask One Thousand saying, you know, I was waiting for this moment, focus. I'm so glad I still have something to give right now. Thank you so much to ESA for allowing me to get on the mic when this awesome guy ran Extreme 2. It's a moment I won't be forgetting for a long while. Oh, Aww. and shout out to... <laughs> oh, and shout out to Papot 2 for not speaking into a loud mic at the intro. Let's give $1.50 <laughs> for making Bobby the Black Death Stick uh, Castlevania 3's file name and the rest will go to making that Super Mario 64 bonus run happen. Oh, and focus, I hope you'll get to at least tell the audience the fact about Red's voice actor. Thanks yeah. so much for those donations. Thank you so much, Tempest. Yeah, Tempest was my commentator for Extreme 2. Really, really good. Came out on short notice. Really good guy. Anyways, uh, this boss is everyone's favorite. I don't think they even have a name. They're a boss, uh, and it's the major one of the major instances of RNG. So basically, we're just going to try to shoot at it, um, and if we're lucky, we can get a no-spin cycle, which basically means they won't go inside their eye. Oh, we got it! I've always... Yes, nice. Sweet. Uh, uh, I've always can... seen this as like the snail going back into the shell. Yeah, it is a snail, um, which makes sense with yep. <laughs> onions. I mean, I always associate yep. onions and snails. <laughs> so this is a yeah, nice little just... area, by the way, here. Uh, this is supposed to be like a, a spire that you climb up in like a circle. We're not going to do that. We're instead just going to use Zero's double jump to like skip so much. I like how they put a lot of effort into it, though. You know, A plus on effort. Zero's yeah, this, double jump uh, is really useful for that. Yeah, this section is really, uh, really cool in that like you're meant to circle all the way around it, and like if you fall into a gap, then you fall down to the, the lower level, and you have to kind of reclimb back up. I'm gonna be quiet here for Tanyan. I need to be. <laughs> Me too. Wow, the, what is with the pause in the middle of it? That doesn't make any sense. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know really why. There's a really creepily the, long the pause. Really long pause when he's talking to Axel. So, yes, but yes, the <laughs> same the same mechanic that I mentioned before with rolling, rolling and dashing is super useful for the first part of this fight. Uh, after three times around and around, um, we're gonna get explosion here and um, use it twice on Tunyon. That was a bit far away. Ooh. Yeah, not great. Oh well. Ooh. This should still be fine. I am gonna still. Yeah, this yeah, is a bit slow. But yeah, we're fine. Yep, you're good. Yeah, honestly. Tunyon is a boss that I actually have a few issues. I just tend to not do that well with Tunyon for some reason. Tunyon's hard to me. A little bit. Yeah. Because it's always the, uh, weird to be positioned. Yeah, the the positioning that you have to be for uh, to get the explosion shot to deal maximum damage is a little bit awkward. Like, you have to be really close, but like not on top of him. Uh, and you also have to not be walking when you fire it, or else you might get a sideways explosion. Uh, <laughs> which is always really unfortunate when that happens. Don't you hate it when you you know you want to well, you want to explode and then you accidentally explode in the wrong dimension? Yeah, relatable. <laughs> 
confusingly, there's a there's one of the um, reploids here is called Lily. The one that's called Lily is called uh, Mika on the Japanese version, and on the Japanese on the English version, there's a different reploid they renamed Mika for some reason. Like they changed the names entirely. These are actually all like they have the same names in total of the whole set of reploids, but for some reason they swap them around. So I have to say, if you're like, yeah, I have to say like, oh, make sure you collect Mika stroke Lily. But they're different reploids on the different versions, even though they have the, they're the same reploid but with different names, which is so confusing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, the two upgrades that we got there for zero uh, that we put in are double and triple barrier, uh, which are probably the strongest upgrades in the game. Uh, they're they're extremely powerful. They make things really. Uh, they simplify things a lot. Uh, they increase your invulnerability frames by a ton. Like. Zero is almost invulnerable from here on out. Uh, like every time you take damage, uh, he gets like five to six seconds of invulnerability. It's like insanely long. Uh, I'm also, one really important thing now we have is a Tornado, which is super powerful. Um, we got this from Tunyon, and um, would you like to explain a little bit more about Tornado, uh, Papa? Yeah, uh, so uh, Tornado with, uh, with Axel, uh, you. Uh, shoot it out with the laser attack that you have here, uh, and it kind of stays in place for a little while, uh, and then after a short delay, it launches itself forward. It deals uh, really high damage really quickly, uh, not quite as fast, uh, high of damage as explosion in general, uh, but it's uh, it's a lot easier to hit things with it, uh, with Axel specifically, uh, just because of the way that it stays there and then launches forward uh, for it. Um, Zero also gets the uh, Rising Tornado Slash. Uh, I think it's uh, like Rajin... Rajin Show. Exact. Rajin Show. Rajin Show. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's, that's actually the highest damaging attack in the game, uh, is Zero's uh, Tornado Slash there. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be using that against several of the bosses. Um, a lot of the weapons in this game are useful, uh, with the exception of one or two. Uh, just they get overshadowed by how strong uh, Tornado and Explosion are. So we just showcase it a little bit here, where just stand in place, fire the Tornado, and it destroys all the Moai Head uh, mini-bosses here really quickly. Yeah, it's pretty... Honestly, I first did that with Zero's um, Ryzen show, and I was just like, I'm constantly getting lag, and it's not working, and then I just switched to Axel, and it was very easy. Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess one thing to mention that we haven't mentioned yet, uh, the, so the English version and the Japanese version, uh, that were, so the English version we're playing on is the UK, the European version, have the same damage table. Uh, the American English version actually has a different damage table, so you deal less damage on that version. Uh, it makes a lot of things a lot harder to get through. Uh, certain bosses are uh, almost uh, impossible to get their faster cycle kills with on the uh, US English version. Uh, but this is uh, one of the instances where uh, having the stronger damage uh, and the triple iframes uh, with zero make extremely short work of Stone Kong. And this is also in the refights that we get later. The refights uh, have a few different strategies because of the weapon tank we picked up in um, Ryborski's stage. Uh, yep. But this is one of the ones where we actually don't really change much because this is really useful. It's a lot of multiple hits, which is what we use Tornado for a lot, or like Raijin Show a lot for. So. Yeah. Uh, and we did get our final chip upgrade in this stage. Uh, we're going to be putting that into the fourth uh, slot of special in uh, Zero's tree. Uh, and that will upgrade Zero's uh, special attack damage. Uh, so it'll make some of the boss fights uh, a bit faster that way as well. Um, just a really handy upgrade to get. And it's really convenient that it's right in your way in Stone Kong stage. You don't have to go out of your way to get it. Yes, Dave. <laughs> Dave, the, the Reploid. <laughs> Such uh, the English name, it's just so weird. Like you just save Al and Michael. And here yep. comes my one of my second favorite stage I would say in the game. Um which is uh, Snipe Anteater. 
So this is probably an infamous stage, I would say. A lot of people get confused because of the 3D of it all, <laughs> to be honest. When it's not that bad, but would you like to explain a little bit, Papa? So the first section is fairly straightforward. There's not a lot of uh, ways to go out of your way. Um, you just kind of uh, dodge the, some of the enemies and get to the first teleporter. The second section is uh, designed as a large maze uh, where you're kind of supposed to explore around, find all the rescues in each area. You have, you're trying to use uh, Axel's copy shot in order to uh, uh, change yourself into the samurai enemies, which can walk through certain walls in this area. Uh, really confusing. You can get lost for a really long time here casually. Uh, as a speedrun, the path is extremely straightforward. You just go right from the beginning to the end. Uh, and there's like one little glitch here where you can kind of force the last cycle a little bit faster. Um, I know you've uh, talked about it a little bit before. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, basically, um, this can happen as any character, but for some reason, there's like a, like a few frames. I think it's a very small window where essentially yep. that like that portal is open early, and it means you can technically enter the boss before the floor is finished loading, which is kind of funny. It's a, it's a nice time save, and it's really easy as Axel, because as Axel, we can hover and maintain that same height. You can do it as zero or as X, but those two don't have a really consistent way of gaining height, so you just have to hope you jump into it at the right time. So yeah. This is also one of the longer cutscenes, I think, in every version. Like, as yeah. any character. There's one other thing we should mention. Uh, who you enter the boss arena with changes the cutscene. Um, and certain... Well, we have to get to still time it out. Certain cutscenes should be faster than others, but... It's if they yeah, fast are... enough with the, you know, swap of the character. Yeah, there's there are some cutscenes that are a little bit faster with one character than they are with the other. Uh, some of them it's not worth it to swap, uh, whereas others it would be if we knew exactly uh, which one was faster all the time. Uh, but yeah, we're, just, we're gonna abu abuse the uh, Rising, Rising show. Tornado here, mm -hmm. the Rising Show, uh, here to destroy Antidor very quickly. He did not go to the other side of the, the platform or the, the tube, uh, which is really nice because yeah. we can't follow him to the other side. We have to stay on the one side. I call it Cyber Cylinder. <laughs> I, I think that's a good term for it. The Cyber Cylinder. If you, you literally cannot attack him as zero if you're on the other side. But the good news is if you stay to the right, you can sometimes get a uh, very... Um, you can get like multiple hits as he comes over with, with multiple speed. Essentially because the, the boost of speed that he gets... Um, essentially makes him vulnerable quicker, and so we can use that to get multiple hits. Also note that we didn't collect any Reploids, and that means we didn't actually get that menu screen where it lists, you know, all their names. Bobby, Trinity, and then suddenly, like, Tanaka. Like, they didn't bother, like, localization! This game is localized, partially. Um, <laughs> I mean, Tanaka is a nice name anyhow, so, like... But I just found it funny that it's just, like, some of the names are unchanged, and then some of them are just, like, Bobby, Ali, wow. <laughs> Oh, look, it's Damn. Falco. Yeah, it's Falco yep. time. Um, you want to go right ahead and pip up? Yeah, uh, so uh, Krorang, uh, at least this first section, I would say is probably the most difficult platforming section in uh, in the run. Uh, there's a lot of section, uh, a lot of like cycles that you want to hit here, which is uh, one of the important reasons for uh, the increased dash speed here, uh, hyper dash. Uh, in order to get to some of these, uh, the red ships, the red uh, planes, as quickly as possible, uh, it's really handy to have that. Uh, the red ships I would call a little bit weird uh, with how their physics are. Uh, if you're standing on them, they're normal, but if you start walking while they're like accelerating, they sort of don't uh, have full physics on them. Uh, they kind of like push you back and forth a little bit, uh, oscillating, oscillating you there. So, As you can uh, see, perfect can example. Be, yeah. It can be a little bit difficult to get the optimal cycle, even with the increased uh, dash speed uh, on them. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the sections that it really does improve uh, how fast you get through it with hyper dash. Yeah, and you before, you said before with like the previous route, uh, you actually did a no chip route before where you got no, pretty much no reploids. That was very different. Yes. That was like back in, well, you can, you can talk a little bit more about it if you'd like. Uh, yeah, so when I initially started playing uh, this game, there were basically uh, very few new game runs that had been done. Uh, I I sort of w went back and 
to the drawing board and kind of relooked at some of the the stuff that had been going through uh, and took a lot of strats that other people had done from either new their new game or new game plus runs uh, but i looked into it initially as a no chip route uh, where uh, you didn't collect any of the rescues or you avoided as many as possible uh, and sort of dealt with the uh, the disadvantages of that. Uh, this this route has been rerouted, or the the new game route has been rerouted a couple of times uh, for uh, a a three chip route where you get just speed on one character, uh, a like twelve chip route where you get uh, double iframes on both characters and speed on one character, uh, and then finally this route, which I think is a good mix of uh, both speed and uh, safety with the seven chip route uh hyper dash for one character and triple life frames for the other yeah um also there was a li nice little skip there i got it second try um basically the game has some weird physics properties if you dash into a wall um and then leave the wall your air dash means it now ends with a regular falling speed which basically means you like air dash and then slope down when you normally air dash you like stop really abruptly that allows us to cover longer distances, and so we can skip having to do the platforming around there. Yeah. The Crow Rank fight is actually really cool, where it starts in this, like, 2.5D section, where he's in the background, uh, and you have to try to figure out what weapon you're going to use to to get him to come to the foreground as quickly as you can. Uh, and then uh, utilize just how fast uh, Explosion deals damage here to finish him off really quickly. That was a really good uh, crowing, actually. Yeah, that was a some really good stage. Uh, if we have time, do you, um, Shadow, are there any donations at this time, if I may ask? Uh, not at any, at, uh, not at this point, but I can talk about other things if you'd like. Yeah, sure. you can talk about it a little bit. All right, thank you. So first of all, I gotta say I love the Eng that you're playing this in English. Uh, <laughs> thanks everyone yeah, so much. It was the decision that we chose. Uh, it's a bit <laughs> slower, but it's all worth it in the end, I suppose. We're not even at. I actually say the the best question mark for last. High and Art's the last one in my route. So, but go on. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no worry. Uh, so yeah, thanks everyone so much for donating for that bit war. But you know there are still other bit wars open at this point. For example, for the Edna and Harvey run that's going to be happening in a few hours. There's also the bit war. Uh, it's for deciding uh, the fate of Doctor of Harvey, Doctor Marcel, and Edna. And right now the two decisions are at an exact tie, like either destroying Harvey or pushing Doctor Marcel. Mutually They're exclusive. Like, but not really this time. We're going to do both. <laughs> so yeah, if you'd like to see one of the two happen, like you really don't want to see Dr. Marcel pushed or you really just want you want him to be pushed, you know, any small donation can make the difference on what's going to happen there. So that gives once you that uh, if you want that extra incentive for that, uh, make sure to donate. Sweet. Uh Papad, I think you, yeah, yep, mm, yep. this is a mini boss. Our, our, our favorite mini boss, <laughs> the jet on the platform that just spins around. <laughs> I love this mini boss. It has legs. It has legs, it does... but doesn't use them. It just spins around and it shoots you at random. Um, but this is essentially yeah. mini boss the stage. Um, there's a really cool thing I can do with Hyper Dash here if I get it. Let's see. Um, you can skip over this wall. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that'll cool. make it. Yep, there we go. Yeah, this stage has like yeah. three mini bosses and then a final boss, but Tornado is really useful. Yeah, Tornado is very strong. Uh, kills all of these eels very fast, and most of the mini bosses extremely fast. Uh, each of these sections here ends with a mini boss, except for the last section, which leads right into Warfly. Uh, we did uh, turn and collect the uh, the sub tank there. Uh, yeah, the health sub tank. You Yep, the health sub tank. Uh, very useful. Um, when we so a unique mechanic about this game is when you collect a uh, a big full health drop uh, that's sitting on the ground. Uh, it not only does it refill the full health of the character that you're playing as, it refills a sub tank completely. Uh, so it can make uh, a lot of the things a lot safer uh, later on in the game. Uh, just making sure that you don't uh, die or that you have a little bit faster. Uh, fights from your particular damage boost that you might be going for. Is that gonna kill? Ah, uh, where's the last one? One more. Oh well. Surprised you didn't do the uh... I, I forgot where uh, it was. Homing Sniper. 
Oh, Those because uh, Sukimos, uh, who is currently the world record holder for this category, uh, taught me the other method for this, which is using um, the tornado. Uh, I forgot it, evidently, because I was a bit too slow. Um, the the one thing I don't so we didn't we did mention this roughly. Um, Axel, instead of getting full out like weapons, much like in all the sort of Mega Man games, you gain weapons from the bosses you defeat. Uh, Axel also gets guns, and the gun he gets from um, T Tornado Tunyon, it, it doesn't really work as nicely as the main gun he has. Uh, so it means that I have to. Oh no, Bill! 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 No, Bill. No, but let me explain. So, um, that specific sub weapon, I tend to call it a sub weapon because it's not the main weapon. I think works a lot less efficiently than the regular shot. So I had a method as snipe. I had a method to use snipe anteater's weapon, but I decided to try to show that off. Why you brat? You will pay for this. Oh man. Oh man. Voice acting. I love the English voice acting. I love it. All right. Uh, so we're going to be utilizing a cool uh, trick here uh, to uh, get uh, get Warfly into sort of a stun-locked position here where he can't dive back into the water. Uh, you uh, Really helpful to have uh, Zero's triple uh, iframes here where you can just kind of stand in place and as long as you're standing here and he's doing his uh, sort of stab attack or his water gun attack, uh, he won't go into uh, his later cycle to jump back into the water and waste a bunch of time. Uh, his weakness is actually the the Rising Tornado, uh, where it would deal extra damage to him. However, it will force him into his longer invulnerability period and cause him to later back into the water. Over uh, here! So and then yeah. so we want to avoid that as much as we can and uh, just kind of force him to stay above water. Uh, for optimal uh, optimal speed for it. Yeah, we also tried to use... I didn't have that much health as Axel, so I tried to use Explosion. I couldn't use it twice. I wanted to use it twice. But uh, uh, the reason... So Axel is basically our speed character. Zero is essentially our safety character. And here comes Bill with the health upgrade. At least there's that. Yep. At least, at least yep. I chose a character by accident that happened to give me more health. So... Yeah. <laughs> And now we get on to... I save this one for last, because I feel like in high and stage, you honestly are better with higher health. So I tend to save this one for last, because the first section, which is supposed to be the easy section, is kind of hard. And the second section, yep. which is supposed to be really hard, is really easy with the method we use. So if you'd like to take it away, Papat. Yeah, so uh, the first section here is fairly straightforward. It's a uh, 2D section all on a straight line. There's a bunch of enemies in your way. There's some of the eel mini-bosses uh, from... Uh, uh, Warfly that uh, we'll see. Uh, but in general, it's just get through as quickly as you can, uh, take as little damage as you can, uh, and just make it to the second section. Uh, the second section is uh, normally extremely long and extremely uh, tedious to get through uh, if you're playing casually. Uh, a lot of enemies in your way that you have to get through, a bunch of the radio towers that knock you down and waste your time. Uh, but we're going to be skipping pretty much all of it uh, using Axel's copy shot, uh, which is uh, going to be the you get to see in the, the game you we'll often. Yeah. You don't actually use it that often because most of the copy shot things, first of all, it's limited to uh, Axel-sized reploids, basically. That's what they, I think they define it very, very abruptly, like, it has to be similar to the size you are. Well, I'm like, that's not a very good ability then. It's very specific. Yeah, uh, yeah Jim, don't want to get Jim. Jim is a very easy reploid to get. Um, yeah, the first section is pretty much just all platforming in 2D. And then Copy Shot, which... Copy Shot is kind of strange as an ability in this game. It's the same in X8. You need to get Copy Shot on the final shot. Um, so you don't want to spam this too much. This enemy takes three hits. Oh, and, and, yep. I uh, messed that up. I would oh. just die here. Yeah, you just probably should. And die. I, I, that's the ability that... So, there we go. I proved my own word. This ability is kind of strange. Um, we need to basically do hit normally twice and then the copy shot. One, two, three. And then we get the ability. So now we get to hover over here and finish the stage. Hooray. Yeah, this section is normally like incredibly long, uh, but utilizing the copy ability 8 trans, uh, we just get to go straight through without having to worry about any of it. It's uh, 
really, really fast. <laughs> and also, there's an air bad. dash there. There's an air dash there yeah. that I, neither I nor Papat knew for about like a month before. And then Suki just said, "You know, you can air dash." I'm like, "No, <laughs> no." And I'll be quiet. Let the audience get what they want. <laughs> that is the worst line in the entire game. I'm gonna put that out there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're gonna utilize water gun here to shoot at the legs of the big mech, uh, the big ant uh, antelope mech here, uh, just to get it to lower into the lava quicker uh, uh. and uh, get uh, a lot safer, faster kill on Heinard here. Um, the anteater, or excuse me, the uh, the antelope mech uh, is a little bit odd, uh, where like you have normal uh, physics for standing on it uh, if you're on the body, uh, but if you're on the neck, uh, it has really low friction. So if you get knocked down while on the neck and the mech is turning, uh, you kind of slide off into the lava and you have to redo the whole fight. It's kind so, of funny when uh, you get it that... though. Yeah, it's really frustrating when it happens, right but. Yeah, Whoop. we do that at the beginning to make sure that uh, we uh, have the longest time possible before it turns, uh, so we can get the the quickest kill on Heinard. Yeah, water gun is also super useful, honestly, because water gun. Um, the good thing about water gun is is that um, effectively uh, it it really it does like multiple hits at once, um, and it's a good weapon. It's just not really useful compared to the other two. I mean, it still is, has its uses. In New Game Plus, it has a lot of uses, in fact. But um, uh, it's. It's very strong, it deals damage quickly, uh, it just doesn't deal damage quite as quickly as uh, either Explosion or Tornado does, uh, so it gets overshadowed just a little bit by them. All I also right. like how we were uh, completely calm. Hi, X! Now you can Hello, play with X. X! Glad to have him back. Also glad. Goodbye, X! <laughs> uh, X isn't useful because X is completely unpowered in New Game. Like, completely. Yeah, yeah, and now we get to the 4-minute auto-scroller. Nothing. X starts with nothing, uh, no health upgrades, no weapon upgrades. Uh, he does get the weapons that you get from bosses, but he gets them as their base form and not a like a charged form. Uh, X can charge weapons, uh, but they're uh, and some of them are very strong and useful. Uh, charged but, water gun, for instance. Yes, uh, but he's just really not useful at all. Uh, so there's two ways that you can unlock X. Uh, you can either defeat all eight uh, of the Mavericks uh, and unlock him here, uh, right before Palace Road. Uh, or you can collect half of the rescues in the game. Uh, or, so, uh, 64 the that you can unlock X. Yeah, 64. The earliest you can unlock him is after four stages, if you collect every single rescue in all four of those stages. Uh, and some of them are very hard to actually get without them dying. <laughs> Silver, or, sorry, I think the diff this name is Silver in, in, in Japanese, but I think it's a different name in English. The one at the very start of um, uh, Stone Kong stage is a good example of that. Uh, pretty much most of the ones in Hyenard stage are a good example of that. Um, yep. Which makes 100% runs, which only really Suki does. Very difficult indeed. Which is effectively all Reploids, because again, if you try to do a true 100%, you have to do three playthroughs, but... Yep. Anyways, there's, there's really not much here for a little while, so if there are any donations or anything you want to say, Shadow, go right ahead, since this is just an auto score for like two minutes. All right, thank you. I definitely can tell uh, everyone who's watching right now something. Uh, for example, the amazing prizes that you can win uh, during this event. If you donate at least $30 uh, during uh, throughout the event, uh, you'll be eligible to win a ViewSonic Elite monitor. It's like a great monitor, so... Um, $30 in total throughout the event will make you eligible for that. Uh, huge thanks to Fuse Sonic for providing us for, with that prize. And uh, besides that, if you donate a total of 50 or more dollars, uh, you, you'll be eligible to win a Nintendo Switch. Like, you'll win a console. Uh, it's like, I, I have one myself. It's like a super, super great console in my opinion. I used to run uh, this on the Switch, actually. Um, and then I learned... And... Wow. Okay, I'm glad I'm playing on English. Uh, that is a big death. I should have, I completely forgot to hover earlier. And so if you hover and get hit, you actually completely fall like a rock. And in that particular section, it can lead to a big death. So that's about a minute, but that's okay. 
we get to hear more of the good music and sorry shadow i'm sorry to interrupt you there but yeah you can continue on because there's now a minute more time i totally did not plan worry, that i promise i did not plan <laughs> the switch is just so great i'm willing to accidentally hover myself off into a cliff for it all right so uh i where was I? I don't know. Uh, the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch, great console. Apparently you can also play Mega Man X7 on it, so, you know, that's another reason why you want to have a Nintendo Switch. Uh, the only reason. This game is now portable, guys. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so huge thanks to Kaspersky for providing us with that price. Uh, it's like, without them, you know? It's like, those extra incentives for uh, uh, for donating. And, you know, there's still that amazing uh, donation incentive for the SM64 bonus run of 16 stars by Simply uh, for after the 70 star randomizer run. Uh, if that donation incentive is met, uh, you know, we'll get to see a whole another SM64 run. I'm a huge fan of SM64, so I, I, I really, wa really want to see that. So still a little bit away, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that we can make it. Yeah, let's let's do it. It's honestly, it's good to see. It's a it's a really good goal, and I think it'll help hopefully push this. Um, what are we currently at in total donations? Should I ask. Uh, right now, let me refresh just to be one one hundred percent accurate. Right now, we're at thirty six hundred sixty one dollars. I'm out really of the hopeful. 10, I'm really hopeful that we can. Um, I meant I meant for the the event as a whole, by the way. Oh, that whole event as a whole. We we're almost at the forty one k actually. We're at forty thousand eight hundred fifty seven dollars. Uh, also, awesome. because, because we also just got a fifty dollar donation from the X Men saying no donations to read. Let me fix that. My seven-year-old son is a major Mega Man X fan and has had me play through the entire series. I had to play these later ones until now, and it was a great excuse to catch up. Thanks, thanks so much for that donation. And yeah, that was that brings us a little little bit closer to that 41k. Yeah, I'm hopeful we can get hit 50k by the end of the event. So now we use explosion yeah. twice, and the boss is done. What a, what a what a wonderful time to spend five minutes in the stage <laughs> four for a boss like that, you know, good video game. Yeah. Yeah, a bit rough yeah, with the... the death there. I just completely, for I was like, wait, do I dash? Do I, do I hover? And I was just like, oh, it's too late. It's too late. And that can be really frustrating, but it's, it's still fine. Fortunately, right at the end of that section, uh, there's a life, uh, a one up and a, uh, a full health refill. So we get to fill our sub tank for free and we get the extra life for safety. Uh, the, the upcoming stage uh, can have some tricky moments in it. Uh, we get our purplish figure here. I don't know who that is. Do you? Do you the stage is kind of purple as well, right? Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like sketchy. It's like it's like a bad signal. It's like I'm using you know RF on my television. Like ew. Like <laughs> I don't want that. It's channel three. <laughs> okay, so this is actually a nice really moment where we get to see like how what triple invincibility really does, or triple barrier does. We're gonna switch to zero yep. here, and it just allows us to do that. It's a really nice bit of movement. Um, get hit off the thing so you don't get hit off this thing, the uh, boulders here. Oh, you can still save it. It's crazy how much time you get. Um, yeah. But essentially, triple triple barrier allows you to um, damage boost through these uh, boulders that normally would give you knockback. And also, as I was mentioning earlier, there are some uh, cutscene exploits. We can slash jump to get a little bit further in that area, and basically Zero has to walk a little bit less. It's a very slight optimization, you know, to make up for the minute of time loss, but... Yeah. All right, and we're coming to the final boss, right? It's it's the yeah, final the boss, end. Red? Yeah, he's the, the, the he's ending, the right? Red Alert, so he's gotta be the end, right? Yeah, he's, he, it's uh, name dropping, obviously. Red X7, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Mega Red 7. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're talking about this professor character. I don't think he's important. Well, I know you didn't come here. Just uh, but yeah, red is a uh, it's a pretty hard fight, uh, both casually and as a speedrun. Uh, he's teleporting around in this uh, at, for the first phase of the fight in this like three by three grid, uh, and spawning like his little clones that uh, will attack at you. Uh, after, uh, after you hit him a certain number of times, uh, or you uh, he teleports twice, he'll do this tornado attack uh, where he's invulnerable. So you kind of have to wait for him to finish that up before uh, he does his next teleport section. Uh, nice three hit cycle. 
No, it wasn't actually. It was barely not. I barely missed the third hit. Unfortunate. Yeah, this is I know this is one of those like sections that, that is really really handy to have the uh, the sub tank for just because uh, dealing damage to red uh, with the tornado, uh, you usually end up taking a lot of damage here. Uh. Right, and then we're in phase two, <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, let's so, go. Uh, in phase two, uh, red can teleport wherever he wants to go, including the spot where you started out at. So. Uh, I'm gonna sub tank uh, here. Use the sub -tank. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to be safe. So you're kind of at the mercy of the the luck a little bit for it, uh, hoping that he teleports to a spot that's close enough to you that you don't have to chase him down and uh, not be able to hit him. Uh, he's to your left. Oh, that was his clone. Whoop, whoop. Yep, that, that was, was me being dumb. It looked. Did I hear him say over here, like. Okay, yeah, this isn't a great red fight. I am, I just got so confused by the voice clips there for a second. I have not played on the English version for ages. And so I'm like, wait, he's not... Wait, where is he? Oh, he's back. Okay, I love this. I, you can barely see as well. The camera in X7 is really kind of finicky to move around. Um, so sometimes it can be really frustrating. And the that's his weakness. No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Hit him with the him into the tornado attack, and he's going to teleport for a second time, so you're going to get another tornado. What a wonderful boss. This is a, the epitome <laughs> of red, everyone. Honestly, this boss is just really right. frustrating to deal with. There we go. But at least we're done right. with it now. Oh, man, Good the final boss job. was so tough, right? Man. Yep. Oh, wait. Uh, uh? There's uh, not, that's uh, not the final oh, boss? The game continues. I guess yeah, so. I guess hallway's now the final boss. Okay, cool. Um, I'll take it. Yeah, not uh, the yeah, best so red the... fight I've had. That's probably one of the worst red fights I've had. <laughs> but red is... That's our red B. Yeah, sometimes red just says no uh, and is the biggest pain. Uh, but yeah, we got this section here. Uh, there's another blue mech. We're going to avoid it because it's uh, it's kind of slow to actually deal damage uh, to the mechanoloids here. Um, we're going to be... Uh, you're going to be using the, uh, the snipe shot. Um, yep, yeah, that snipe which... shot is super useful for this one because essentially, as these robots curve, if you use snipe shot on them, uh, they will go in for multiple hits. Uh, I'm not getting a good pattern right here, but let me see if I can get it back up. There we go. And you can see it gets them out really quickly. Whoop. Yeah, there's there's a few ways to defeat these mechanoloids uh, as quickly as possible, uh, or as quickly as you can. Yo, I got really uh, lucky point, with the extra he with the extra weapon energy, but yeah, yeah, this way is a uh, pretty a very fast way uh, that you found uh, fairly recently. Yeah. Um, but there are like three other methods. It, yeah. Would you like to explain it some of the other ones? Either water gun or uh, tornado or. Uh, you can get into the blue mech to uh, get by there. Shoutouts to Dog Room, uh, to to destroy them. It's just not quite as convenient as uh, some, using some of the other weapons. And I do really like the the snipe uh, snipe method. Yeah, it's quite nice. There. Yeah, it's really cool because it's really easy to get them into position uh, most of the time. Uh, yeah. Dogs. You can jump over the first two, but then I have to roll through the other ones. But I don't think I'm doing that right. I'm I am gonna be safe, and I'm just gonna take the health. A life sub tank, just to be safe. Yep. And then we can just dash underneath here, um, which is really convenient. Yeah, the uh, it's it, it's very convenient in this section that you're uh, when you dash off of an edge, uh, you uh, retain your height, uh, so you can get past those spike sections just with a dash off the uh, off the ledge there. Um, it's makes it a lot safer uh, to try to get through, especially that spot where the, the big Moai head with the spike is moving uh, back and forth, trying to knock you down. Anyways, right. now we and get we're... to the uh, refights. Yeah, the refights, uh, some of the uh, refights we're going to be utilizing different strategies for. Uh, Borski and Crow Rang will be the same, uh, or relatively the same. Uh, we have the weapon sub tank here to utilize to kind of get them through their cycles a little bit faster. Oh god, I fr the, oh, they sound so angry in the English version. I got punked! You. Oh, no, that, that wasn't quite the punk, that was the, uh, that was the here goes nothing. Okay, we didn't get punked this time, but in my heart I got punked. Yep. 
But yeah, explosion, because the weapon um, tank refills not the full weapon, but refills enough, we can actually use four explosions instead of two. And that's really useful for both Borski and, well, three bosses mainly. Um, so I'm going to actually switch back to Axle Shot, because the one thing about um, Grenade Launcher, it's a little more stiff than the other weapons. It doesn't allow you to roll and aim like certain other weapons do. Uh, it doesn't, uh, if you jump with it, you're pretty much locked into that direction. You can't adjust to midair, which is kind of infuriating at times, but I mean, Explosion is so useful. Explosion just deals huge damage real fast, so it's it's useful even in the spots that you might not think would be useful uh, from like not being able to move quite as optimally. That was a perfect nice. curring right there. Very nice, yeah. And we're gonna also we also try to route to avoid like the health and weapon pickups as much as possible. Although for a marathon, I tend to be a bit more cautious, I guess. Yeah. Trying to minimize your movement in uh, this section. Uh, collect as few as possible. Do as few swaps between characters as possible, since uh, some of the bosses are still more optimal to fight with uh, Zero than they are with Axel. All right, there we go. We got the instant hit there. All right, and then standing in rest of this spot, he comes back up, and that's the, the Manip spot where he just will not... Whoa. He... What? Happened? You I guess he out. got damaged a lot? I think he got weird. damaged a lot and, like, hit his halfway point or something. That might have been it. Which would be weird, but... Yeah, the same thing. Also, the uh, Master Saber, which we didn't explain, the fourth thing, basically improves um, special weapon uh, attack, which means that basically the, the um, Raijin Show has... Um, uh, zero is actually even more effective than it was before. Yes. So that means we can use it really usefully. Like even on, it's even better on like the next boss I'm gonna do, which will be. Do I have enough health? I'm actually gonna go over yep. to. Uh, I'm gonna go over to uh, our favorite onion boy. Yeah. First, and um, <laughs> this is <laughs> good. Good. We love this. This is a slightly different method. We use his own weapon to defeat him. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very fast uh, using his own weapon because just how strong uh, the tornado is. Like you can you can defeat him before he goes into his uh, second phase to, uh, of attacks. It's Great. very very fast. I just learned that today. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get. Sometimes you can get caught up in the tornado. That did not happen, fortunately. So speaking of tornadoes, uh, monkeys. That's a that's a good segue, right? Um, yeah. So now we have enough health to do this, I'm pretty sure. I've gotten yeah. bad luck on this boss before. Really bad luck. You want a specific pattern, um, which we actually got in the first way around, so... Rip. Yeah, cool, I got it again. Break his sword, usually if you break his sword right away, he'll go into his uh, shield toss pattern, which gives you plenty of time to uh, defeat him before he goes into his invulnerable period where he'll bang his chest and then uh, do another jump. Uh, occasionally, he'll jump into the middle. I don't know exactly what triggers it. Uh, and then he'll make stone that split in half and then explode, which never made sense to me either. <laughs> yeah, but uh, destroying the uh, the sword usually uh, causes him to do that pattern. Uh, and you can get like the double and triple hits with the uh, tornado slash while he's doing that. This is really a, a showcase of how powerful Raijin Show is. Yes. All right, hopefully he jumps into the right spot. No. Right. Uh, you can still maybe save it. Uh, uh, from here, it's going to be real tough. Um, oh, oh, almost. Kind of. Yeah, there's an RNG yeah. manip you get as, um, as um, Gungaroo here. Uh, if you manage to get him to land into the right spot, you can get him to kick a lot and do the same sort of thing as... Um, as um, uh, Warfly, but and if you don't get that, you get to have, did you have, yes, this, yeah, fun, yeah, the the chase chase fight where he's just jumping around and it's really really awkward to try to deal damage to him. I oh uh, there we go, that's a good effect. I love that effect. Yeah, if you enter the menu, menu sometimes, oh, 
This is good. He's also invulnerable in triangle kick, I should mention. Uh, yep. So when he's triangle kicking, you can't really do much of anything. That was alright for the bad RNG at the start. Yeah. But yeah, that, that pattern yeah, sometimes... Sorry, if you're ahead. able to get him to land on zero, like uh, from when he gets out of the mech, uh, basically you can force him into just doing his kick attack the whole fight uh, instead of jumping around and uh, wasting all your time. Uh, but it's it's a very precise position that you have to be at, and you have to hope that he jumps into the right corner, the one that you're in, and then uh, you have to get not get knocked down or knocked out of it. So. It is, there's a lot of trickiness to it. Uh, it's easier with triple iframes, uh, but it's still not free. Uh, so it just didn't happen to get it this time. And then Anteater, we're still hoping that he just doesn't go to the opposite side. Being and nice. he just oh, he just uh, literally casually went over. I'm, <laughs> well, the good news is... Come back. Mm, come back. Come back. I'm going to switch to Axel and use his own weapon. Be careful. Nope. Ah. That was me not getting the health pick up there. That's my fault, honestly. Yeah. I'll get the health pick up now, even though it's completely useless other than the sub tank. Yeah, that happens sometimes in the boss fights, but um, if there are any donations at this time, might as well read them if you have any, Shadow. Well, actually, I do. I got a $20 donation from Little Shalom saying, I've been working open to close every day. I wanted to spread the wealth. Smiling face. Thanks so much for that donation. Let's go for a old, old geezer robot round two. What? That yeah, was weird. You did, it, you did enough damage that it. Uh, he did two cycles at the same time. or two, Oh, nice. Uh, I've never gotten that. I I've only I've seen him do the two cycles a couple times. I've only seen him do instant from first to third cycle one time. So that uh, was that? Was that that or no? Uh, no, that was that was the two Dang. phase. Uh, still good. Uh, there's second yeah, good fight. Still, yeah. Yeah, that fight went much better. Unfortunately, we still lost a life. But the good news is with X7, if you die effectively, it's really it's like the game is super generous. Yeah. Yeah, even with a, I believe even with a game over here, you just spawn uh, back with, with the, the enemies of, already defeated. Yeah, with the same number of reploids, uh, the Mavericks that here defeated. Yeah, this is eventually the same boss pattern as with. Uh, um... Oh come on! Whoa. Okay, thank you. Um, right, you might have to be a little bit risky. careful when he goes back up. Yeah. Uh, one thing to note about the refights, uh, all the refights have twice as much health as they did in the regular fight, uh, which is why they're taking a lot longer, and it, it's also a reason why getting the, uh, the special attack damage upgrade from, uh, Zero's special tree is so useful. Okay. We're safe. There we go. Alright. Yeah, that was, that was okay with refights. Some really good, some really bad. That's what happens with X7, really. Yeah. Also, it's like 12 a.m. over here in, in, in the east coast of the U.S. I'm tired. <laughs> but it's still good, honestly. It's been a good, pretty good run overall. And now I get to finally see who that purple professor is. Like, whatever the heck that's yeah, about. Yeah, who, you know? who is this mysterious professor character? I don't know. I've, I've never played a Mega Man X game before. Who Ever. could this be? Oh, look, hi, X. Right, it's nice to see you. So yep. Come on out, professor. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's Who could have believed? I My favorite mathematical believe operation. Is coming. Yep. <laughs> wow, we're really going to sum everything right out of here. All the plots coming together, guys. Yep. Still hard to believe that that's, this, this current voice is the same as Tanya. That's right, folks. Yep. <laughs> Sigma's voice is even weirder than I remember. <laughs> I, I, I will never get over the fact that he starts the, the second phase of his uh, conversation with, That's right, folks. <laughs> The English voice acting is so... Oh no, not wheel! Okay. Good swap out. Not a good swap out. I'm gonna switch to weapon tank and do two explosions. I have a low health as Axel now, which ain't great. 
Ah, uh, gun. Okay, Good. we're getting big gun. 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 Big gun. gun. Big gun usually gives you enough time uh, mm. to usually gives you enough time to uh, to finish him off before he gets another teleport cycle. Cool. Shoutouts to one of Zero's uh, alternate weapons that he gets from a couple of the bosses. Yeah, it's weird because in the other X games, he doesn't really get other weapons typically, um, yep. which is kind of strange in X7 that that's like the only anomaly. And now we're at Big Sig. Big Sig. Biggest Sigma. So Explosion is pretty much the way to go for this boss. Um, we're going to use Grenade Launcher in just constant. Yeah, there's... Uh, it's, uh, Time the is coming up soon, by the way. Really fast damage. Really fast. Uh, careful for your health. Green Balls again. Mm, this is a terrible pattern. Alright. Uh, there's a couple of safe spots here where you can avoid getting hit uh, from several of the attacks. Um, this spot here uh, is invulnerable to basically everything except for the laser. Uh, uh, and the last time. Okay. How was that for English? I don't know the time. <laughs> if I may ask, Shadow, how's the decent run? I still have a little bit of stream delay. I'm just just making sure until I can see it as well. Uh, it seems about 107 and a half from okay what I see right now. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh, 107 for... 31. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely English for you. Uh, the English's version is overall slower. Also, yeah, good good way to end the cutscene. <laughs> yep. Goodbye, uh, Axel. Just not a bad X7 run. Not bad. Um. During the end there, yeah, a few unfortunate deaths, but still overall pretty good. The game as a speed game is pretty fun, honestly. Um, and I recommend, uh, X7 did a lot differently that I think it was really, um, I mean, to be honest, X7 is not the worst game in the X series. That, that honor goes to X6 in my book. Um, cause X6 I... is a rushed project that didn't really try. X7 had to make something from the ground up and I, I, I do appreciate it for that. Uh, and yeah. plus, I just tend to like. I appreciate 3D games the X6 speedrun. It's a it's a really fun looking speedrun. Oh, it's uh, a good speedrun, but the, I, oh, I don't enjoy casually. the game casually at all. But yeah, X7, I actually enjoyed casually first time I played it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anything you want to shout out, uh, Papat first? Uh, a uh, shout out to Terex and Cab uh, for uh, forcing me quote-unquote, into uh, playing X7. I uh, I had made a, a promise on stream, and they helped me fulfill it. Uh, so really happy that they helped get me into this game. Uh, and Infinite Mystery as well for providing the copy of the game. Uh, and uh, thanks to Suki and to you for helping uh, to yeah. do all these really cool reroutes. It's uh, really good really... to see the game actually develop a little bit, honestly. Yeah. Surprised. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, I also want to really thank you, Papat. Papat is an amazing commentator. I think if you did not see that in this run, yeah, go follow Papat. Absolutely amazing, dude. Uh, you run other, you run other like classic Mega Man games, correct? Yeah, I I primarily run classic Mega Man games, uh, but uh, I I do enjoy uh, splitting off from time to time, finding an, another speed project. Also, shout out to the room that doesn't exist in the uh, credits. There, I don't know where that room is in the game. I've been yeah, pretty it much doesn't... everywhere. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> I don't think it does exist because honestly, some of this is pre-release footage. So uh, I'll mention a few quick shout outs myself. Shout outs to the Twitch team that I'm a part of. Um, uh, oh, 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 Wild Abandon, really good variety of streamers there, and a related thing, Fast as Furs, good for a speedrunning community. They're having an event sometime in November or December. So if you want to go, submit to them. Um, thanks again to Suki. Thank you to you, Pipot. Um, you did absolutely wonderfully. Uh, yeah, X7, if you guys ever want to learn, join the X, um, join the X speedrunning server. Always a good place to start. Um, if you want to follow me, I'm focused on Twitch and I am refocused with a K on Twitter. Yeah, X7 is a, and honestly, the fact that this is so accessible now makes it so much easier to run as well. Uh, I might as well just check the in-game time, even though the in-game time is inconsistent. Um, the in-game time itself is not used compared to RTA because the in-game time, like, counts things weirdly. It doesn't count the main game. Okay, 51. Yeah, that's about expected for what we got. It doesn't count, like, cutscenes, we don't think? It doesn't count I the main menu. I don't know if it counts cutscenes. It, def it definitely does not count, uh... 
boss select. Uh, yeah. So all that whole time that you're in the boss select, menu, you can constantly count. look at X's icon as you neglect him in new game plus in new game <laughs> if you want. Um, it does count the pause screen, which is kind of funny. So you can see yeah. literally your anxiety building up as you see the time on the screen. It's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, not a bad run. I think it was a good showing of X7. So thank yeah, you, ESA, really for having us. Um, really good, honestly, that we got to show this game off since it has changed a fair bit, uh, new game has. And of course, we always love the uh, voice acting. So thank you for the bid war as well, everyone. Yeah, I've been I've been focus focus site. It's been really good to be on ESA, and thank you guys. Keep make sure to keep donating. Yeah, thank you, focus. I also before we head over to the intermission and set up for our next run, uh, I wanna say that we got a twenty dollar donation from Little Shalom once again, saying I heard my name on stream and decided to double it. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be setting up for the next run, which is going to be Van Tiver running Bring Fit Adventure. Stay tuned for that. And yeah, focus once. Thank you once again. And... No problem. Yeah. Make sure Thank to keep you. donating, guys. Have a good one.